Okay, so it's being recorded. Um, okay, so um, let us, well, let's look at, well, let's just review, like, like let's do, like, let's look at a, at a, uh, a, a sort of a, oh, well, first of all, um, apart from comments, before the main method, you can have global variables. So for example, here we could do, uh, there, so A is now a global variable because it's out, you can, de it, the declaration is not inside a function. So it's available as a global variable inside all the functions. So you have to be a little careful because if it's named A, then, for example, I can also have an int A equals 20 in here, right? And then what's going to happen is, though, this A will hide this A, right? So let's let's do, let me do it first. We could do um, A equals 45. So this one's going to change this A. This is going to declare the name A to be a local variable in 20, right? And, um, oh, let me put this indented properly. Um, equals uh, a, um, well, let's just make it two star a. Okay, well, um, now we let's we we're gonna we can't put in let's put in an if statement. Now the thing is that what the difference between um, usually in Java you'd say something like um, if true uh, do something right. Mm -hmm. But then the problem is there's no that's because in Java you have Boolean types true and false, so there's no. Um, Boolean types in C, there's just numbers. So non-zero numbers are true, right? And zero, such as zero, zero dot zero are false. What that means is that what I, can, what I put here is I put here like one and it will execute this code. Let me put this, let me put these comments so it's not obscuring what's going on. Okay, so non-zero numbers are true. And, uh, but zero, is, but zero is false. And it doesn't matter whether they're float. For example, if I put it as, this is an int type, this is a float. Um, I'd have to put this in a double variable if, the, if I was to make it double, but we're not gonna be too concerned because the LC3 doesn't really do, um, I think, I don't think they do. Maybe it does do floating point, I have no idea, um, but I haven't tried it, um, but so that, here, this is this is true, right? So I can put, or I could put in here um, um, B, right? If B, because then B is going to be, it's going to do the following thing. If I do, if I do this, then I can do um, A equals um, sixty-five, right? And then I can return A. So in, in this case here, um, we have, um, since, B, since B is not zero, it's a positive number, we're gonna set this, so this should return 65. Um, let's save as into CPROG, call it if, if 
cast dot c. Okay, and then we can um, we can we can compile it normally. GCC um, if test dot c dash o if test and c. Okay, so no errors. Then I can run it by saying in the current directory. Let's do the imp the there. No, it didn't do anything, right? Because it didn't. Um, there's no print statements, and that's intentional. But we can see because there's a shell variable, and main returned the content of A, which is then 65, right? Because this was true, so it set A to 65. Now, if I was to put a zero here and recompile it and rerun it and then look at the thing again, then I get 20 because this didn't run. This is just a demonstration that, that what you expect from... So now you might think this is sort of trivial because you might think, well, I can just do the same thing. I just have to put like one for true and zero for false, but it leads to um, a different sort of strategy for C programs that what a C, what, what usually what you, since in, since in Java, you can only put true or false in a header, you tend not to do anything in the header, but oftentimes in C, what you do is you have if, and then you have some task. Okay, so this is the main task, right, that you want to accomplish. And what it returns is, is uh, it returns, say, minus one for failure, that it failed to do something. And it returns zero for success, which is sort of the opposite. In other words, it's sort of like false, nothing went wrong for um, success. And then what you do is you put inside here, you put error code, error um, response code. So you'll see, in, you, there'll be in a lot of C programs, this thing where the main action occurs in the header of the if statement. And then you just, in the body of the if statement, you have the error response, like if something went wrong, which is com which is completely different strategy. So something that's a, a little thing in the programming language that seemed to be um, different leads to sort of a whole different kind of pattern of programming the way you use it. Because then this then the point is it could return, say, um, positive number like one for, um, well, you're not going to do that, right? Because you, what you could do is return one or this. Now, you, if you, you might, let's say you want to return some information with like a positive one, then you'd have to do something different here. Like you'd have to say task equals equals, you know, equals equals zero, because then task might return say n. If it was, if it was say reading through a file and it read n characters, then you could have the response be okay. It would it would read zero characters. It would read n characters. And if it if it, it failed, like he couldn't read from the file at all, then you might return minus one. So you might have three conditions here. So you'd want this to be an int in which still this would be this would be the response error response. But you wouldn't care if I mean maybe you would want this to be. Um, um, you know, you'd have to figure out the details. Maybe you wouldn't want this to minus one to be failure. Anyway, the, the, um, uh, oh, would you, maybe you, what you do is you would count instead of zero here for this situation here, you would say if task is less than zero, because then you do the error response code for minus one, and then it would return zero and then n for that. And you and you can use this kind of thing for stopping loops too, because if you if you um, like if you have for if you have a for loop, you have for some number, then you have a condition in your for loop, and that for loop also is stopped by a particular number being zero or one. Okay, so 
the, though the question what we want to do now is we want to see well if we have this so you understand what it now so but but the thing also is though apart from that little indication if statements work the same way as if statements in java and c and also that's going to be true for if and if else statements it's going to be true for for loops and do loops and while loops that so all the control structures are identical except for this one thing about the um there being no boolean variables to use true for non-zero and false for zero okay so now we can go through and look anyway is that okay are there any questions about this that you might this is just about how c works Oh, down here. Well, like, let's say, oh, let me give a concrete example. Let's say that you, there's, there is, and, and for those of you who've had a systems programming in C, you know there's a system call called read, right? So read uh, reads from, um, there's some arguments here, which are not important for this. There's some arguments, right? One of which is a number that says I'm going to read from, say, a file. Uh, there's an integer here that will be read. And what read returns, well, we can see what read returns. We could do, um, there's a manual here, man to read. And if we scroll, look down here, return value. On success, the number of bytes read is returned. Zero indicates end of file. Um, and let's see, if it is not an error, this number is smaller than the number of bytes requested. Um, on error, minus one is returned. So this is exactly the situation that, that, that I envisioned over here with task. The task is some function, and it might be trying to read a certain number of files, number of bytes from a file, and writing them to a buffer in your program. So, so then it, so the point is, on success, it returns, say, 100 bytes, right? If it, if it comes to the end of file and tried to read, there'd be no more bytes, so it would read zero bytes. And that could, be, that could control the end of a loop. But if there was um, an error, it returns minus one. So the task is just some function that you write that, that performs some task you want to accomplish in your program, like read bytes from a file or just do something else where it might fail. And this, this is sort of like, um, um, this is also for success. It worked and returned zero bytes, it returned n bytes. But this is for fail. So this is a this is a common strategy. Um, does that does that sort of make it more complex? Yeah. Because it. Um, whereas in in Java, what you do is you'd say, okay, if some condition is true or false, then you perform the task, right? So you'd have to sort of know about the task. Before and then, if you want to catch something went wrong, you'd have some system of exceptions or other stuff. That, so, so the structure, even though it's a small difference, there's like small differences that lead to different programming. This is a, a programming pattern. And so, all I was doing was pointing out that the pattern is different in C than it would be in Java due to this very minor opportunity that you have that the Java does not have. Okay, so um, any other questions? Okay, well, what we, what we wanna do is this has got two new things. It's got a global variable. We change the value in the global variable. We have two local variables and we, um, we uh, have a, have a uh, let's put this back to one. And let's see, oh, no, let's put this to A, and let's make it simple. So let's have, because we want to look at, the, well, I, want to, I want to show you what's happening. This does, so this is an example of global variables, and a global variable is a local variable, and then um, what, um, and, and, and an if state. So we want to see in the code, what course, in the assembly code, the LC3 compiler Produces what corresponds to each of these items. Okay, so we will um, let's see. Open the um, make file if I can find it, and change this to 
if test. And over here, we do make. And um, I obviously did something wrong. Let's see. Oh, so I got it. Okay, so let's see. So what did I do wrong? Says um, illegal statement termination. Oh, maybe uh, maybe it can't handle uh, global variables the way that I wanted to. Um, unless there's something else here. Oh, let me just compile it regularly. Maybe we've hit something where there are some, the, the, the LC3 compiler is just, yeah, so there's nothing wrong with the code. It probably doesn't like this A equals 45. Mm -hmm. So let's make this, let's try this B and let's see if this works. Uh, we'll first check that it works. Oh, and then we'll do make. It still doesn't like. I guess it doesn't like the global variable then. Yeah, it doesn't like the. It doesn't like this. Let me see what. Uh, oh, maybe I can't assign it to. A, maybe I can't reset the global variable. The point. The problem is that what's happening is. That, um, yeah, because the problem is the LC3 compiler is only the small fragment of what you can actually do. Okay, so that worked. So it didn't like, so what you can't do with the LC3 compiler, you can use, you can read from a global variable apparently, but you can't set it. Okay, I guess. I mean, I set this, no, well, I set this one here. Why can I do this? Well, you got rid of the uh, int A, the second. Oh, yes, it didn't like. It didn't like me overriding. It didn't like the local like variable. Hiding the global variable with a local. It couldn't handle that complexity. So in in the usual C, you can do that. But here, so what you can't do with the LC three is have a comb is have a global and a local variable with the same name. But you can in C in general. That's just a a defect of the LC three compiler. Okay. Um, okay. So. Now with that sorted out, we can look for if test.asm. Oh, maybe I should mention there's this other file here that we haven't mentioned. If the sim file, how does um this is this is the symbol table, right? What happens is there's a symbol table for each function, right? And what 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 it does is that um if you notice it's like it's just like the in the assembly code, you have all the labels here, and then you have addresses. So it works this it works the same way that you you have now that there's that's a little bit misleading because this is just the the symbol table for the assembly code, right? But it's not exactly there's something else going on when you compile because it has to go through and figure out how to set up the local variables and so but then anyway that's what the symbol table is you're, you're familiar with this and you can go through and see what all of these um oh and you notice though one of the things to do is you can see well here's main at 3000 e right and here's the global data start that looks like it's 3000 e right but it's not because it turns out that Anyway, so there's something funny going on because look at all these. A is 3,000. Oh, this is 2E. Oh, so I'm right. Okay, so the global data start is 2E and A is 2E. That suggests that's our global variable, right? Because global data, I mistook, this is E, this is 302E, so it's further on down. Okay, well, let's look and see about the ASM, the assembly code and try to understand how it works. Okay, so you, there's some exercises like this on, you know, um, on rig X and in the text. And so we've learned that you, you, you know, um, 
that this is stand one thing to here here's something you can remember is this one for hull is always going to be x300 b you can remember that mnemonically as this is the this is the address when you're ready to be done okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so and then this one is well no, it's not that line it's this line here is is going to always be 300e that's when you're ready to enter the main method okay so those are all those are just sort of you don't have to go through and now the and you know that the um that that um r5 and r6 are starting at the mysterious x e f f f right mm -hmm. sort of um okay but then apart from that apart from that reference thing because then you know that you, and you know that you'd have to you have to count down to find out where where r4 is because that but usually you don't you just need to know that this is going to be r4 and then you get to the rest of the r4 by r4 plus something now if you if we, if we compare let's compare the c code with this the global variable has 35 well, here it is. It's just the first thing in, it's just the, it just has a dot fill 35. So just put the 35 in here. Now, some global data in your program is read only. That's what we, you know, in, in your, the usual C program, there's two parts of global memory, Glo the global segment of your program. There's read only global memory and there's, um, um, <laughs> there's also read write memory so apparently this is read this is read only for the lc3 compiler but there's our global variable a equals 35 so it's just r4 we don't actually set it at a, well then here we can see we can look down and find where we're going to set the value of r4 right so now we want to go through and sort of parse the program and figure out where everything is well the, the clue is the pattern is there's a blank line here, and then there's going to be this first line here, which tells you there's one local variable, right? If there were if there were two, this would be a two. Because why is that? Because R6 negative a number is allocating space. And this is the last thing that you do before the top. So this this code here is all just setting up the activation record for main. And then we want to go through here and see what well, we have. This writes to a local variable, so we are going to uh, look for a um, store into R five zero. So this this these three lines are the int b equals twenty we expect, and with that we can, to confirm that you can go through and see well R four plus five should be R four one two three four five. So this is R4 plus five and it's 20. And yes, indeed B gets 20. So that confirms that this th these three lines correspond to int B equals 20. Okay, but the next thing that happens is something with the if statement, right? Now, one thing we can do is look in there and see where does it set A equals to um, 65? Well, the 65 is just R4. That would be R4 cross hat geo. Do we see anywhere in here an, um, an, a storing of R4 cross hat zero? And maybe we do, but let's, and then we can see also, let's look, here's the, um, it's gonna return A, which is the global variable. So, and I think- uh, I don't see it. Okay, yeah, I don't see it either. So, so, so it's a little bit of a mystery. Let's go and see what's going on. The problem is it's a global variable. So we, so that something else is, is happening. Um, okay, well, this line here, when you say R5 plus three, that's the clue that you're uh, writing the return value. Right. Right? Are we looking for the... Um, we're just trying uh, to understand. Yeah, we're trying to sort of isolate 
the, the if statement. statement. But by sort uh, of going through and seeing, we want to. We've got that. We've got the int b equals twenty up here. Yeah, and I we think. Want to find uh, where it ends, right? I think line thirty-eight is uh, the start of the if statement, and line. Well, there's all, but, but then the point is, all of this has to be the start. There's nothing between this and this, so the if statement has the if statement has to start here. If oh, that's yeah starts here and we want to find out where it ends so we know this is running the return value right but how do we get the return value is in r7 well this loaded thing from r7 this but look this this added the address of r4 cross hat zero so this is the address here address of global a right because it's mm -hmm. r4 plus zero so this this then is low then R seven here R seven equals return value okay so this stuff here this stuff here is all to has all to do with with the return address so something. It's likely that if code stops here, and that and that also there's two things. One, is, there's several things going on. One is here's there's got to be a branch, right? So mm -hmm. you locate the branch, and it's it's a branch on NP, right? And where does it branch? It branches to L seven. Um, so it. Um, branches here um, on negative or positive, something is negative or positive. So there, there's there's um, two, there's a code block here, right? Code block here. And a code block here. So it's code, let me put code block one here and code block two here. I'll, I'll 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 put up this assembly file too, so you can get the you can get you can sort of if I put all this up online, then you can sort of see it as what's going on. Okay, so um, now the the let let's go here and start to see because the first cut. The, we first have to do the if part. We have to check. See, this branch here is making this decision. So this has got to be the uh, decision code, right? This is doing the if B, you know, this is sort of like just the if B part. Well, what does it do first of all? Well, what's, uh, well, let me, starting off with, what's R4 plus four? Well, R4, one, two, three, four, is uh, R4 is true. plus four is address of zero, right? So, so this, this is kind of cheating a little bit. Why because, is it cheating? Because it's <laughs> saving true as opposed to... Well, no, it's saving zero because... You you well let's let's go through and see because it's going to it, let's go through and see what it does right I mean I'm not sure if it's cheating is it it's a strategy I mean it's a it's like doing something you didn't when you say cheating what you mean is it's doing something that doesn't match your expectations of the way the compiler should do stuff right something is is mysterious about what it's doing so let's see what its strategy is so this is address of zero, right? Mm -hmm. It's address of global zero. Then, um, so this is R, so R3, the effect is though that R3 equals zero because it's adding zero to R3 and putting it in R3. It's loading it from the location of here, of the global address, okay? So this, is, so this code here, has loaded, this has just gotten, this is just, see B here, you're just reading it out, right? So this is just, 
this part here is reading B. That so that's the that's the the B part here, right? You're just reading B. Okay, then. Uh, I mean, you're reading zero. So you're not reading B. You're reading zero. Sorry about that. You're reading zero, and then here is something else. Okay, I was misspoke. Okay, you've got your zero here, right? So let's see what it's going to do. What 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 it what it because what it wants to do, it wants to check whether B is zero, right? Mm -hmm. So it's got so it's got to like it's got to, it's going to so so that so it has to. This is the reference point for this is this defines what you mean by false. So the question is, does it is it going to do what's false first or what's true first? Say we've got two code blocks here, block one and two. Well, what what's our seven? It's obviously here going to get the negative of a number, right? We've knotted it and made it minus one. So this is minus something. Well, what's in our seven, right? Is um, um, it's this one here is R seven. We we stopped the first line. R seven. It looks like R seven is R four plus five. R7, if you look at line 28. Yeah, but let's look down at line 30, right? This mm -hmm. one here, this is just B. This is just saving B, right? Mm -hmm. This is loading B. It's, it's like this wrote B to R5 cross edge zero. Then this is right away. Re, like It's like it's sort of crazy, right? Because you're <laughs> reading it. You've just stored it there. And so, well, what was it? Let's go and get it again and back into the same <laughs> it was it was already there, right? But you have to do it again because the compiler isn't trying to second guess itself. So what this does is R seven now has. Okay, let me put this up here. It's like the computer's version of walking into a room, forgetting what you uh, walked in there for, and walking out. Walking out. Yeah. So that I jumped the gun here a little bit. So we've got B right here. So this is reads b which is what i wanted then this thing reads the zero right so r7 is b and r3 is zero and b is 20 so you've got 20 and zero now what this does is r7 now it knows that r7 is what you want to compare so this is r7 equals minus b equals uh, minus 20 right because we read B into R7, then we got the negative of it. Then here's the sort of the crucial point. It adds R7 and R3 and puts it back in R7, because these are just throwaway variables. R7 plus R, um, R3 equals zero plus, um, no, it's R7 is minus 20 plus zero. So what is computing here is zero minus 20, right? Mm -hmm. It's doing it in a weird way of minus 20 plus zero, but it's, but it's, it's essentially doing Now, if B was zero, oh. R7 would be zero, right? Mm -hmm. If B, B is 20 here, so this is, so it's gonna be negative. What that means here is that when it jumps down here to this branch, this second code block is um, B um, greater or less than zero, right? Because it's negative or positive. So this is branch, branch if not zero. So this is your branch if true. So this is the uh, true block down here. So if you don't, this that must mean this one is, is the B equals zero which is the false block, right? So that's, so this code here, this thing here just sets up, it's calcul, it's tr comparing, it wants to compare B and zero. So it computes zero minus B and then branches and does the false block first, which is sort of what you don't, so this is the, this is the fault, this is what comes after after, so this this false block could be a lot of stuff, right? 
and that's the function of this jump, right? Uh, jump to R7. Well, our, 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 we don't do anything after, unfortunately, we don't do anything here. So wh what the false block where you don't do anything, you load, um, it loads, well, what's an R7, right? Negative, oh, it's R41. Well, R41, right? This is the first thing, this is the code, what's R4 plus one? This is R4 plus one. It's, and so it's- um, Return address? It's the address of this thing here. Where is that address? Well, it, it's L3 if test is the label of, so this is the crucial thing here. <clears throat> um, L, LC3 underscore L3 if test. That's right here, right? So, but this labels the next line, right? Mm -hmm. So next line is uh, jump JMP R7 location, right? So this lot, so this um, line here, uh, look, let me go back. Okay, we've started, let's say we, let's say that B was zero, so we do false. That means we're not gonna do this. So what, what happens, we have to jump over the true part. Why right? we have to jump over this. So we, we load what's in R7, okay? And R7, maybe, maybe this is indented in or block. Okay, so let's see, we jump, let's do this, okay. So this stuff here gets R4 plus one. R4 plus one, is the address is the location r4 plus one points here okay so what happens is if you if if this was if the branch was not true if it was zero so it was in the false block, then you're going to put this address from R4 plus from the global variable into R7, load the address there, then jump to R7. So uh, jump to R7, that's to line 54 below, if I don't add any more lines, right? So you jump here, and th but this is, you get the global variable and return value. So this is um, setting up return, which is what happens down here, setting up return right in here, okay? So it's convoluted in the sense that it first does um, the jumps, okay? And then, so, but, and then, so it has to, because it jumps over, this part here, which is the true block, this is the sort of usual thing you think about um, doing, you know, first in the code. So it's sort of helter skelter a little bit. So let's say though, for our case of twenty here, you're not going to, you're going to branch to L seven. So this is the this is the part that does the A equals sixty five. So we. Um, expect here a equals 65 somehow okay well there is what is this r4 plus three r4 one r4 plus one two r4 plus three is let's see where did I get that okay r4 plus three is the uh, address of 65, which is what we want here. Okay, then this low um, is gonna be um, R3 equals 65, right?
and then it stores. Here, so here's what we didn't see before. This stores 65. Where? It stores it where R7 is. Well, look at R7 here is R4 cross hat zero, right? So now this, this first line here, R7 equals R4 plus zero. Well, that, so R7 is the address of the global data variable that's, uh, that's used. So this R7 is used here. This implements A equals 65. So it's really convoluted, right? You first get the, you first disguise the, in other words, why didn't it just do R3, R4 cross edge zero? Why did it have to do this mess here? Well, maybe you do something else anyway, but this is so that there's mysterious things that we'd have to ask the compiler writer to ask, why did you do this? And maybe if we looked at this in more detail, there, there's some logical reason that for more complicated code, it would do this. Like if we put more lines in, we might see something more interesting and see, oh, that's why they did this. But the but the but the idea here is that that you can't make assumptions. So that the point is what what this the simplicity of this code, right? How many lines of assembly correspond to th these three lines, essentially two lines of C. What starts here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 14 lines. So there's 14 lines of assembly for this one structure. And if we do a different if statement, it's going to be um, even more, you know, now, so now you can, now you're, uh, I can, I know you're all excited about looking at an if else statement, right? which is gonna be like twice as complicated as this. <laughs> or then how about, how about, um, how about like one of the things that I ask on, I give you on the demonstration is I give you some assembly code for a for loop and assembly code for a do loop and assembly code for a while loop and ask you which one goes with which C structure. Like matching, right? Here's three batches of assembly. Which one corresponds to which data structure? Right. So you want to be able. To, so what you want to? I feel like I could do that now. Excuse me. I I feel like I could do that now. Last well, week. Well, was... you could you could walk through it, but you but you want to sort of what you want to have in mind is know the patterns ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. You sort of want to once you see the pattern, you can sort of ice. You can sort of get the the overall structure where you don't have to, because some of this is going to be almost identical if if you change this, right? Mm -hmm. If you put different stuff in, but there's going to be sort of like a decision, then you, it's like, it's like what you actually do is. Like if you put A instead you know, of B. Like, like one goes here, right? You make the decision, then next is is the is the main block right this is decision this is um the false which is your which you you think of as your uh, main main code right and this it the, but this goes um third right which is your true and it's your if code right optional so it's the opposite of what the order is in other words first you have the decision then you have the main code then you jump then you jump over this thing and if you if this decision jumps over so anyway it's organizing it you need two blocks and you have to organize it with with this with this means here so that's the um that's the idea that that you can sort of see the pattern here 
and I'll put I'll put this up on, you know, on um, Piazza so that you can um, um, enjoy it to your heart's content. Okay, and you can see how how we're how you're going to want to do. Uh, well, I guess that's a phone message saying the class is over, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so any last questions before we head off? Oh, there's some questions I didn't hear. Someone will take my word for it, or someone else. <laughs> yes, um, someone said I haven't had systems program in C yet. You, you don't really need to know systems programming. This, the idea was for this function read. It was just a function. Okay. So yeah, you'll learn it in the first week of when you take systems programming. Yeah. So we will um, continue with can this in the lab. Maybe the thing to do in the lab is to let you work on the rig X exercises and the exercises, the text and ask questions. So that way you can sort of get that out of the way and begin to assimilate this stuff. And then we'll we'll deal with like on Friday we'll deal with like for loops and maybe and then then uh, we can begin to deal with sort of more functions and some other things. But basically, this is sort of you know it's just basically the last few weeks are looking at C code and we don't have like there's nothing really there's no more real content except for learning about C structures and stuff. Okay, well I guess I should stop talking and let you go because it's eleven fifty. So, and let's see, we want this, we want this, okay. I will be back.
Okay, take care.